Uh, thanks for joining me. Of course, you're practicing. That's great. Um, I recently practicing a lot, but I was actually hoping to interview you a little bit. Do an yeah, experiment dude. here. Sounds good. Okay, let's do this. So, I've really been enjoying your um, your your live streams, especially when you go practicing. I love signing in. And it feels like I'm practicing with somebody else. Um, yeah, but the good old days. <laughs> which is, uh, yeah, like the, the good old days when we used to do it when we're, when we're in school together. And yeah. uh, it's like these days that you don't see anybody. It's actually, you know, you're not just um, practicing alone. But, you know, it just feels like you're practicing with someone else. So uh -huh. I want to get to that. But before, so really quick. So probably a lot of people that are following the stream would be your followers. They don't know me. Um, and some of the people who would be in my stream, they may not know you. Probably most of them know you. But uh, anyways, just really quick. Let's, so I've known you for, for a long time. Um, so we met in school together. You were doing undergrad at DePaul. And I was doing a certificate program. Um, so before that, I'm just going to... Uh, talk about your this is what I know about your career if I miss <laughs> anything or if I if I you you tell me so you started out percussion in the percussion scholarship program you grew up in Chicago right and then uh, a program that I know well because I've been uh, teaching there since 2014 as an assistant teacher I think I replaced your I yeah. replaced you when you took off so um, so anyways you started PSP then you joined the Paul that's where we met. So we were there for the undergrad years. Uh, then I left DePaul, but I think I, I finished 2013. And then you were, uh, when did you finish DePaul? Was it 13 or 14? Uh, 14. 14. So you still were there. But so I would see you, you know, playing Civic. And, uh, and then you, do you, then you went to CIM right after, right? Yeah. For masters. <laughs> For, for, yeah, for like a week. <laughs> okay. So you went to CIM for a week. And, uh, and well, you, you weren't, but then you left CIM because you got uh, the uh, Detroit Fellowship. Is that, is that correct? Or So I got the Detroit Fellowship right after DePaul, but Mark wanted me to also go at CIM at the same time. Okay. So we tried it. It didn't work. I'm back. Are you? Are you? Yep. Okay, I'm back. You know what happened? I reached my time limit, so I, I give myself a time limit on app. So I didn't know. I didn't know I was uh, gonna be back on Instagram. So sorry, everybody. Anyways, you were saying, so you were in Detroit. Sorry, I missed that. You were in Detroit and trying to do CIM at the same time. Yeah, because Mark wanted me to try it. Because okay. Mark's crazy. So. so, but that was really tough, I'm assuming. So you just, Very tough. St so, so you just uh, stuck with the Detroit. And then, do you go to, you were briefly in the Pittsburgh Fellowship as well. Yeah, so I, after Detroit, I went back home to Chicago for... I guess a, ca a school calendar year. Yeah, uh, and that's and where we were teaching the, together. At the system yeah. Of being, yeah. Okay, cool. And then you went to Pittsburgh for the fellowship, and then you won Calgary right there. Yep. And then your professional career like started. I mean, you were kind of you were playing professional before, but really officially your job. And then you have been in Calgary for what? A couple of years? Two years, five months four months and almost 30 days okay cool so you were there for those two years and you just recently won principal percussions of kansas city symphony that's awesome um and uh i bet you're looking forward to get started getting started there hopefully when everything is over but you know what's really interesting the reason i wanted to do this is because i've seen you i've seen a big part of your process, you know, from the poll years to the point I saw you the week before the Kansas City audition. I was doing a mock audition in the poll, and you sat there and you gave me some feedback. 
So, you know, I've seen you go from uh, all the way when you were like a young, enthusiastic kid to uh, yeah. an enthusiastic professional. So uh, this live uh, stream is kind of a selfish thing because I wanted to, <laughs> to I wanted to learn some things from the process, uh, from your process. And uh, I wanted to discuss. Yeah, like I, I wanted to see what else is going on. Uh, so, yeah. Did I miss anything? Uh not really, no. Not really. Okay. So I know, yeah, I know your background pretty well. You know, something that was really interesting, though, is uh, recently I saw, uh, you know, I follow you on Instagram, and you put your brackets of time of how much you practice, right? And I, yeah. I, and I bet you some people thought, like, you're crazy when you're going 18 hours a day, you know? So anyway, yeah. so how is that? What made you go? 18 hours a day of practicing. Um, it, it was a time where in at Detroit, I didn't have a lot to do. Um, I don't know if it was like a Beethoven cycle or something, but I didn't have that much to do. If anything, I had like a triangle part on one overture and then that was it. Um, so, and then the Detroit audition was coming up. So I was like, oh, I gotta win this. I gotta win this. I gotta win this. Um, and so I figured, well, I got, access to the hall i can basically stay there all day and like take naps in the dressing room <laughs> i've been there um, actually i've taken a nap down there yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's nice yeah so like i don't know it's just a thing i tried um wouldn't recommend it because i turned it, i basically turned into a zombie like all yeah. i did was practice and think about like not that that's a bad thing to think about music all day but like right you know, you gotta live. it can be it, <laughs> yeah i know it can be a bit too much but i think a lot of percussionists i think we, we can all relate i mean because we can go a little bit longer and we have so many instruments to cover that sometimes mm -hmm. like you you just <laughs> and you want it so badly right uh that you just go really hard but i don't think i ever went 18 hours so yeah i would not recommend it so props to you but like I think in general, um, I mean, I guess that's a testament of how much you wanted that job, right? Yeah. And, but do, do you learn anything else from that experience where you're like, you know, maybe I shouldn't want it so too badly or, because actually I was listening recently and maybe you can connect this. Um, you were in the Ad Percussion podcast and I was listening and you were actually saying that you really wanted the Kansas City job. Like there was like nothing in your mind saying like, you were like, I have to win this, right? So how do you, how, how was it different, like dealing with the pressure when you were taking Kansas City compared to Detroit? Um, I think with Detroit, I didn't have faith in my abilities. So I figured if I just over practice, there's no reason why I wouldn't have faith in my ability. But then, then it turned into like, oh, um, well, I'm practicing because I think I suck. And so I started practicing because I thought I sucked. <laughs> um, right. So my whole approach to the audition was um, on, on a level of fear and a level of I'm not good enough to win this, so I need to be better. Uh, or I'll, I don't think I'll ever be good enough or like all this, all this stuff. Mm -hmm. But with Kansas, it was more like um, I had the same idea. I was like, I really need to win this. But the the way I practice was approaching it in a way that like nobody can be more musical than me. I'm gonna be as musical as possible. Nobody loves music more than me. Like or, or it was just the complete opposite approach where I was just practicing because I wanted to perform well and make music well, not to be perfect and beat everybody. Right. Um, yeah. Yeah. So it was just a different approach. Different approach, and it also seems like. You know, there, there was a certain belief in your abilities. Like, you know, when you're going to Kansas City, you already, like, knew you were good, you had a job, like, you had that belief in yourself. And I think that so many times, I mean, additions just, like, they just, like, really uh, show the what you believe in, right? Like, it's just nothing. Like, if you're really confident, you will do really well. Like, if you believe in your abilities, you would probably do pretty well. But if you're in a state of mind where you're doubting yourself, you're probably not going to. Yeah, gonna you're, get... you're, 
you've already lost at that point. Yeah. Yeah. I, I feel like it was harder to keep that feeling because I, people, I mean, people might not believe this, but I, I think it's harder when you have a job because you're like, oh, can this happen again? Was that just a fluke? Mm -hmm. Like, oh, like, you know, so. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. You know, and I think that that's like, um, when you went to jobs, you really, you then you realize, okay, I, I'm pretty good at this. Like I can do this. Right. Uh, and I think it's, it's cool that you, I mean, a lot of people, I would say there's a, there's a certain amount of luck always in mm -hmm. any auditions, but when you can be consistent and when you can show up and like be making semis and finals that builds up and you, you feel like, uh, more confident about your skills. Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So yeah, that's that's really awesome about you know you overcoming that right. But you clearly overcame that you know through many many years of practice right. So I want to go like way way back like PSP and I know you love this program. So do I. I think it's just an incredible like program. It's just you know for everyone that doesn't know about PSP or or PSG the Percussion Scholarship Group of the Chicago Symphony. It's um, it's a free tuition program that the CSO offers for young percussionists starting in grade fourth and, and fifth. And um, so, like uh, Doc Woodell and Patsy Dash uh, from the Lyric Opera from the Chicago Symphony, respectively, they I started this program. What was it like about twenty years ago? 20, yeah, like twenty. Yeah, just about. 91, 90 or 91? Yeah. 92? Yeah. And I think there was some belief of being able to empower young percussionists and people from different backgrounds that wouldn't have the opportunities to just like have a world class education in percussion. And so they started this super unique program. And like, you know, you're one of the first uh, people to just like come out of there and like go full on with a music career and get a job. And so I think that's really awesome. But so, Tell us a little bit about your experience there and like what was so special about the program. Um, I think what was good for me was that they didn't, especially early on, they didn't push me to become an orchestral percussionist. They were just like, oh, you're good at this. Let's just keep throwing you a bunch of stuff to learn and uh, keep getting better at your fundamentals. And 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 I think Patsy always said that she made the program to help teach the values of music. like. You know, uh, empathy, hard work, camaraderie, uh, you know, uh, teamwork, stuff like that. And so I, I kind of, I really gravitated towards all of those. And um, yeah, so I, I think one of the things that they also were a stickler on was stick control. And I just loved doing stick control because it was something yes. <laughs> that I didn't have to really work hard at because it's just, you know, you just follow some patterns and you just repeat it a bunch of times. So I felt like, oh, this is something easy I can do every day. Um, mm -hmm. Then a twos and all that stuff and, you know, all that good stuff. But yeah, they, they never overtly pushed me until uh, I was about to go into high school. Um, and then they were like, okay, so uh, you've been doing very well and we think you should probably consider you know, working towards this goal for college. And I was like, oh, well, like, I guess that'd be cool. But like, it, it didn't really, because I, I never thought that would be a possibility for me, because it, it was just kind of like, oh, I do this on Saturdays, this is fun. But mm -hmm. Kathy and Doug were like, no, this could be like a, a legit career. <laughs> yeah. Um, and of course, like a freshman in high school, like, what, what am I thinking about careers? <laughs> right. Um, so yeah, like, as soon as I agreed, to you know, kind of ramp up my percussion education through high school. They they ha they just like hammered stuff on me. They gave me a bunch of extra work. We started doing accessories. Like they just went ham. That's um, great. Yeah. So they I think because they started me so early, I was able to um, understand how much work was went into this. So I kind of knew like what was expected in college, if not more so. Mm -hmm. um, and I just kept building on that and was like, okay, what else can I, what else do I need to learn? Who else do I need to talk to? Who do I need to take lessons from? Like, yeah, they, that program was very yeah. good with that. 
Yeah, absolutely. So let me ask you, so do you ever feel pressure to be able to stay in the program? Do you, do you ever feel like from a young age, you were like, oh my God, I'm not sure if I'm gonna make it. You were just always just practicing hard and enthusiastic and you, and you, you were okay. Um, I, I, the first time I felt pressure was when we started marimba. I was horrible at marimba. Like I, I was, um, oh man, I was crazy at snare drum, love snare drum. But when it came to mallets, I, Doug says I never practiced mallets. Like I would just practice all my snare drum stuff <laughs> and saying, oh, I didn't get to mallets this week. <laughs> yeah. Um, so yeah, he, he, I don't know what, I don't even remember that. Well, part. yeah, I'm I mean, just asking this because, you know, teaching, like teaching there, I noticed, you know, some kids, they feel the pressure sometimes. So, I mean, I, I, I just have uh, positive views on the program. And I think the, the most amazing part of the program is how it instills this discipline and state control and yeah. like every week. And this is what we do and you become used to it. And, and if you do that and you're learning one solo, one etude per week and you move on to marimba and you keep doing that, then you suddenly you're learning all this music without even realizing. So they, they yeah. instill some really great habits uh, in you. And actually, I feel like you're still doing that. <laughs> you know, you're still practicing stick control. Oh, yeah. <laughs> stick control like all the time so how much stick control are you practicing right now like just, uh, i don't know yeah like well right now it's probably like 45 minutes to an hour like i don't i don't practice it that often just because I, I try to get away from it more because i could just wake up and just do it all day but then i want to like i should probably go out and like get groceries or something like that right right um, but yeah, like it's it's definitely something that it, I I stuck with because it, it always made me feel uh, like I was making progress. Um, and Doug and Patsy said if you practice stick control extra for easy, so I took them at their word. Yeah, so. no, absolutely. And to be honest with you, I mean, I wish I would have had that growing up. Like I, you know, I have a I had a totally different background where I like started on violin and piano and then i got to drums later on so i actually was the opposite from you i was like i leaned more towards the keyboards and then i got you know to the states and started doing some like i was like oh my god rudimental drumming like what is that do i need to do that and like i had to ca i had to catch up and i have realized the power of stick control it just if you do it i mean and something that i really love about your um uh, book and your so to be honest with you, when your book came out, and it's like uh, I, I thought, like, oh my god, do we really need another stick control book? And uh, but <laughs> I'm really glad I like I looked into it, and I've been following your live uh, videos, and I've done the warm ups with you and the fundamental work. And your approach is really useful, right? Like I've been using it, and when I go live with you, and we go like 45 minutes an hour, it doesn't seem like that much time, and we're just doing simple you know simple full strokes simple down strokes and i just feel like you know what it reminded me of a little bit was when i used to play tennis so when you're a tennis player tennis players have these drills where they just go it's like completely different than a match right a match yeah. is unpredictable right like totally unpredictable but they they practice the same motion a hundred times right the ball is coming you you do these drills and then suddenly it just becomes so easy. Like you don't even think about it, right? So I, I realized that like that's actually kind of your approach. Like you, you, so you, you did all the stick control, right? Books, all the crazy stuff, accidents and rebounds, Lefebvre, all that stuff. You did that. And then, but you still come back to, you know, you just have to work out your fundamentals. How do you, how do you get to that? Like, how do you discover that? Like, how do you just, we're like, okay, we need to write a book on fundamentals and this stuff. Um, it, it's a combination of, like, it, when I was in Detroit, I was wondering how to make all the, like, excerpts and, and techniques feel like psychic nature. Um, so I started watching, like, Michael Jordan videos and, and wondering, like, okay, what did he do? Like, he just did 100, 200 shots from every corner of the, of the court. I'm just like, okay. And then I watched Bruce Lee and he's like, okay, what is, uh, he, he's always talking about um, reflexes and training your reflexes to react a certain way. I'm like, 
Okay, so what what is that? Okay, so I guess stick control is like, okay, we work on the pattern. So when we see the patterns, we automatically do that. What's the simplest version of that? So I guess everything's broken up into single, double, multiple bounds, and then flams are like another type of single. Then that's also, okay, so roughs are that. Okay, so what's even simpler than that? Full downs, taps, and ups. And I was like, oh, wait, we could just practice a bunch of full down, tap, up combinations. And then when we get to a paradiddle, that's like a down, tap, bounce, and, and up. You know, it's like, it's all broken down that way. And then I met Mark, um, and then he talks about all the flu uh, efficiency and motion stuff. And I'm like, okay, so how do I put both together to make it like a combination of relaxed technique plus training the reflexes to do all the, you know, stroke type stuff. And mm -hmm. so I, that's when I wrote the introduction to the book. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah, no, I think that's so cool. And I think for any young percussionist that watch this, like, uh, just like do stick control and just be very thoughtful about it. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. if, if you were really, if I was that thoughtful when I was younger, you know, um, like, oh my God, you just kind of explode, you know, like if you, because, and, and so many things are like, you know, you're not only developing the muscles, but it's just a, yeah, just the motions that um, like you're practicing, you're thinking about it. Here's the thing, like, I was thinking about this a little bit. We're, we're doing full strokes on the other day that you went live. We're doing full strokes. And I was thinking, this reminds me so much when you're like in an orchestra and you suddenly have to do a full stroke and you have to do that. And then you're thinking so much about it again. It's like kind of like you can transfer those skills. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So, so yeah. So I encourage any young percussionist watching this to like do a lot of fundamental work and a lot of repetitions like i literally oh yeah and everyone especially during this quarantine they should log in and do live with you i told you i was telling you like josh you should like make this you should go live i do this stuff with music at like a specific time like make it a routine and i think that would be so cool because you know i would log in i'll do it and i was just feeling like literally like you know i practice every day you know for people that don't know me but i practice every day and I do my stick control and there are certain things I'm working on, right? But I have not been as patient to get through fundamental. And I think you are patient and you make it actually kind of fun. You put the music on and you go on for a while. So that makes it fun. And uh, so I encourage everyone to go live with you and I, <laughs> I encourage you to do it even more. Okay. So, so, so yeah, so that's cool. So that's talking about technique. So. Let me ask you, have you ever thought about doing anything different than just like um, playing drums? Um, I wanted to be a monk at one point. Okay. <laughs> um, when was I that? To do that. Um, uh, I wanted to be in the WWE when I was younger. Okay. Um, wow. I had a weird childhood. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Is that, um, do you feel like the WWE is there a reason for it or like just, being a monk? I really liked um, the the acting and I really liked uh, two people individual. Uh, I liked The Rock and The Undertaker. Um, and I just, I just liked their communication with the audience, especially with The Undertaker not saying anything. Huh. And he just had all this like interaction with the audience. Okay. Like, very cool though. Cool. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay. But, but these days you're like, well, you know, I feel like every, ever since I met you, you always would have pad. you wanted to do this very driven. Like, do you ever have like doubt? I mean, these days you probably feel pretty good because you just won a major job and you're excited to move and to get your job started, started, I'm assuming. So I'm assuming right now you feel pretty good, but was there ever a time when you were like, Hmm, uh, I'm not oh, sure yeah. this is going to work out. I'm not sure, like, you know, these addition things are kind of tough. Like, I'm not sure if I'm good enough. Do you ever feel like that? Oh, yeah. Like, and that's one of the reasons I, I, uh, one of the reasons I tried doing the 18 hour thing, because I was like, okay, well, for the, the first audition I ever advanced in was um, the Cincinnati audition. Uh, when um, 
Carl? I can't remember his name, but uh, yeah. So I was like, oh, wow, I, I can't believe this. Okay, cool. Ah, what did I do? I practiced a lot. Well, I guess for the next audition, I should practice more. <laughs> Yeah. So, so then I practiced more. I think I got to like eight to ten hours for the Cleveland audition. Um, Which and I was like, I mean, well, you, means... you advanced in that one too, right? Like you advanced. Yeah, in and I was how... like, okay, so I should just practice more. It's... <laughs> how old were um, you? Uh, it was right after. It was the first year of Detroit, so I would have been twenty-two. Mm -hmm. 21, 20, 22 ish. You were 22, so that's pretty young. That's pretty, that's really good yeah. for, for a quick ambition. Yeah. yeah. So, um, but yeah, I, I, plus, plus I, I would always get super nervous. I get the shakes and everything. And I would be like, I don't know how I'm going to get past this. Like every time this happens, no matter what I do, no matter how long I practice, this happens. Like I don't know what to do. Um, and and they got to the uh, then Detroit happened. I was like, well, I didn't have any shakes. I played really well, and I didn't win. I don't know what's going. I don't like you know. Yeah, it was like hard to to deal with working so hard and not getting what you worked hard for. Mm -hmm. um, and wondering like, oh, this you know, am I going to be able to? beat this person who was at this last audition who got to the finals and I didn't or like, you know, all that stuff. Um, and so I just, I had to figure out how to not think about it that way and like not care who was there um, and kind of fake myself into feeling better <laughs> than I was. Yeah. Um, that took a lot, but. Yeah, no, and, and what's fascinating and the reason I wanted to, to talk to you is because I feel like I've seen you you know, I, I always knew you were you were amazing. You were really good since early on, right? Great chops, amazing. And I would see this, you know, ups and downs kind of like you know. Now I was just thinking about it, and you just then you realize how mental this thing is because I think you you always had the plane, and then you have to become more like. And I heard you talking about like when you were saying being as musical as you can be, you know. And it's so hard to detach yourself about this stuff because you do all this preparation and um, and like you really want this gig and then you suddenly just have to show up and just like be as musical as you can be and like who cares, you know, and kind of like go in some ways. Uh, and man, that's 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 just like the the thing to get, you know, like if you are able to do that and it seems like you have been able to do it recently. Um, is there anything else that like you think allowed you to achieve that mental um, state to be able to? Um, yeah, it's again, li listening to Michael Jordan talk about it and, and figure out, okay, so what's a way I can think that will make me feel like that or Bruce Lee, obviously. Then, then I read a book called um, Book the Effing Job by Anthony Mindell. It's an acting book about auditions for actors. And Wait, what is it called again? Book the effing job. It's like, okay. if, you, if you type the whole word, it should come up. Okay. <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah, but it was, it was, um, it just talks about how to let yourself go and let yourself just be the character that you're supposed to play instead of trying to make the character up and just like let yourself like if you decide to cry in an audition, just cry in an audition. Like if that's what the have you done that? Do. Have you done um, that before? I, I came actually. I did in the Detroit audition. I played something, and I just was like, "Man, this is really beautiful." And I just like teared up a little bit. Nice. Um, whereas the Kansas City audition, I like literally, I just went all out for for certain extra. I would just like do this kind of thing before I play and I'd be like, ah, like, I don't know, just get super into character. Um, and then afterwards I'd be like, yeah. And I literally was doing that in front of the proctor because I just didn't care. Like <laughs> I didn't, it was screens off. Like they're not going to see me. The proctor's not going to say anything. Hopefully. <laughs> like, right. You know, so I just, I just let myself do it. Yeah. Um, you were performing. It seems like you were making, making music happen. Yeah. I've heard yeah. of someone else. I think David Herbert also. Apparently, when he did his Chicago audition, he played this uh, scale. They had to play an E major scale or something like that, or an E scale. I don't know, maybe yeah. minor. I don't. Know. But apparently, he did a big crescendo. He finished, and he's like, "Yeah!" 
ah, you know. So he was like getting into character, and it's just so like that's the that's the hard thing. Like you have to like kind of you work really hard, and then you get to the audition, and then you have to be like, um, just be as musical and as exciting as you can be, because the people hearing you want to be excited and they want to be like inspired and. That's the only way to do it, you know, not like, yeah. oh, my God, am I going to miss a note in Poor Game Best? You know, like, anyways, so, cool. Yeah, the, um, the conduct, I did a master class for the University of Georgia, and the conductor was there uh, for the class, and all he talked about was, like, uh, when we talked about the audition, he said, oh, Josh did this in Kiji, uh, in this, in the Bach, he did this phrase here. In La Mer, he did this phrase, like nothing about my technique at all, because like they can't see anything. Mm -hmm. Like there's, he just wanted to hear me pray. Mm -hmm. Like yeah, yeah, oh, yeah. I yeah. mean, so I guess it's like the formula is not, is not, is not a secret, right? Like you just have to do a lot of practicing, so you can control your instruments, and um, then you just, and then that's that's the fascinating thing to me, you know, is the let go part of things, right? Because I've been there where it's like everything is just easy and then we play and then just react to what you hear. You react to the hall and then you're playing with the hall and your instruments and it's like a great feeling. If you can yeah. do that in every, you know, your goal then. So anyways, yeah, that's very cool. And thanks for that. Um, so another thing that I wanted to ask you about selfishly uh, is you had a really crazy like bounce you you know you were fighting cancer for a little while right like you had some tough moments and then you had to recover really quickly and you went on to play that con a concerto right like was there a psychological change in your like after going battling cancer and like that affected your music playing was there anything like that yeah um i like i was too so something i was really good at when I was younger up until that time was hiding my emotions. I had, I had a really good filter on, like I could, I could squash any negative emotions like whenever I wanted to. Um, but as soon as like right after I got out of the surgery, like that I was too weak or actually even during the whole chemo stuff, like I was way too weak to, have a, a filter anymore so like if if i felt like crying i just started crying like or if i was angry i was really angry like it was, it was like the floodgates <laughs> opening um and so like as as soon as i i got out of when i was in the hospital um like i couldn't turn on the filter anymore it was like like it would like it just didn't feel right anymore. So whenever I played music, if I was really happy, I'd be really happy. If I was really angry, I'd just play angry. Like it, it was, you know, it was, it was, it was good for me because I feel like I play Bach a lot better now. Because like Bach is so emotional, you can't you can't just play it straight or else mm -hmm. it sounds like crappy. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I think that was the big psychological thing was just like allowing myself to be emotional and not not be so ready to uh to hide it right you let go a little bit right like you know I, I the reason i asked that is i had an experience where i mean it's 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 way uh less intense than what you had to go through but i there was one time so i have an uh an allergy to fish right so i cannot eat a, a, any seafood right and there was one time I had an episode of the allergies and the week after I, I was psychologically really freaked out by that experience. And uh, so I was super hyper aware of my throat and everything. So I went and I had some like lunch at Chipotle, right? And then I was driving to West Michigan for a, for a gig. And we had to play Rite of Spring. And uh, it was my first time playing timpani in like the end of Rite of Spring. And then, so I had Chipotle and I'm carpooling with a friend and then suddenly I felt like I was having an allergic reaction. Got really scared. We stopped at the grocery store. I bought like an EpiPen in case I needed, and and I took some Benadryl. And I get to this rehearsal, and before previously I was kind of nervous. I was like, "Oh my God, right of spring for sun. But then 
I didn't care about Red Spring anymore. I suddenly was like, I'm just trying to survive. And I, what I hear is that I played the shit out of this recording, uh, out of this rehearsal. And my friend was like, well, like, <laughs> you're going to play like that. Like, if, she, she was like, wow, like, if you're about to die, like, that's amazing. You can play like that. It's like, well, I think I said something along the lines like, well, if I'm going to die, I might as well play my ass off today. You know, so anyways, <laughs> yeah. So, so it like liberated me a little bit. Like this, the nervousness, what goes in your head, it's just like not a big deal. And now you're just playing music, you know. So anyways, yeah. I was just curious if you had a reaction like that or anything. Yeah, that's that's, that's definitely because the other thing was one of the uh, possible side effects from the surgery was either going to be um, I have like a a colon a colonoscopy bag or one for my bladder or both. So I would have had to like carry a bunch of bags around for the rest of my life. Um, so seeing that I didn't have that, I was like, well, I better, I better like use the second life, the second chance of life well, <laughs> you know? Yeah. Um, and plus I miss playing music. Like I wanted to get back as soon as possible. Um, and also I thought it'd be a pretty dope comeback to come come and play a concerto. <laughs> I know, and it was, right? Would you say that's like one of the most amazing concerts you've ever played? That is definitely the most amazing concert I've ever played. Like, awesome. I don't think I'll ever, it, it would it would take a lot to top that concert. Okay, yeah, I bet, man, that's awesome. That's epic, really epic. Any other concerts that come to mind that have been epic like that? You have played with some pretty good orchestras, so anything else that you remember? Um, playing Mahler II with the Interlochen uh, Orchestra. That was the second most intense concert I've ever played. Um, yeah, that was intense. Yeah. Um, third would be Nami Yarvi. We played Rachmaninoff one. That was the most fun, and that was the most fun. Yeah, and that was that was crazy. Yeah, it seems like that the Detroit Orchestra loved Jervy and just like that hall and that piece. Yeah, that's that's amazing. Cool. Okay, let me see. Let me see if I have more questions for you. Oh yeah, I wanted to ask you about online teaching. So, are you doing a good amount of online teaching right now? Oh yeah. yeah. Like how much? You have a like many like a few every day of the week or? Uh, yeah, I have like at least one or two, maybe three a day, ish. Yeah. Give me mm-hmm. take. Um, I have I think right now I have nine students. Okay. So it's like one or two. Cool. Ish. Yeah, I mean I think you're uniquely positioned to like for these times. You know, like everyone is teaching online. I feel like you've been yeah. doing it for a while now. So that's cool. Do you have any tips for anybody teaching online right now? Um, be flexible and be patient. <laughs> yeah. Like if you can't hear something, look at their hands. If you can't see their hands, hopefully you can hear something. If you can't do either, ask the person what how what this feels like. Um, or have them, like I had one student, we just sang uh, Della Clues one and I just went through the entire piece going like, no, that's da, 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 okay, just da, 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 da. like, we, we just did that the entire time. Yeah. Um, yeah, so, yeah, cool. I, think, cool. I think everybody the, needs to be flexible and patient. Yeah, yeah I, I agree with that. Uh, what would you tell yourself, your young self, you know, uh, let's say, let me, like, you know, from where you are right now, like, what would it would you have told told yourself when you were like in undergrad? Uh, stop asking permission to be yourself. Great, yeah, just be yourself, and you know I can see that so much. And like, you know, something I wish I would have done so much more, Josh, is experiment with techniques. And I feel like yeah. you have done a lot of that and really well, right? And I, you know, I remember when I when I when I was at the Paul, I had this big kind of transition because I was coming from like studying in a school of playing totally different than my new teacher Mark and I was just like having such a dilemma but I was like well now in retrospect I'm like I should have just totally embraced that new style and like experiment and you just build your skills you just become better 
So yeah, that's a good. Let me see. Let me see what else. Um, what else I got here? Uh, so yeah, your routine. We talked about um, how you you're trying to practice less, right? Like you're trying not trying, but like you're trying to do other things. Like you, you your issue is not getting to the practice pad and doing your work. It's more like you know you want to you say <laughs> which is awesome i mean i think like that's when you know you you're doing the right thing when you have the passion like there was the other day i was watching an instagram live of this guy james altucher he's just, you know he, he's some interesting guy who, who has this podcast and i was just sitting on my couch and i was like okay the coronavirus thing had just started everything was closed i was like feeling like kind of pessimistic i'm like are we ever gonna have concerts again so i just typed a question like you know one was, and i was like i'm a classical musician should i quit you know <laughs> and i was just kind of goofing off i you know i in the back of my mind i wasn't you know really ready to quit or anything so he said something like you know is this something you're still passionate about like do you still wake up when you have the curiosity and I think that's what everyone needs to like. This career, I would say, is pretty tough, right? Like for yeah. what you just talked about, like you know, you've been doing it since really young, working really hard, and it was still tough to get those jobs, right? So you really have to have uh, like a lot of, you know, passion for it. And like it sounds like you still have it, big time. Waking up, so everyone listening, you know, watching, if you. Um, don't have the passion maybe you need to question yourself what you're doing right yeah. so that's cool so you're what else so what else are you doing like these days in the to pass the time um well i'm i'm work i'm still working on the second book introduction which is i think i finally figured out how to do it correctly so i'm working on that um i i did a bunch of audition template stuff for my website yeah. Um, I'm, you know, trying to keep my uh, body healthy. So I'm trying to do walks like an hour and a half. Like I'll probably do another hour and a half walk today um, or hour, two hour walk. I don't know. We'll see. Um, nice. Yeah. What do you listen? Do you listen to anything when you walk or you just walk? Yeah, I just, I listen to my, my like hype practice playlist. Um, it's like a bunch of rap music and some uh, Korean pop and so a lot, a lot, a, a lot of stuff. Mm -hmm. um, I'm trying to cook more and learn different recipes. I made bone broth a couple weeks ago, which was cool. It was really good too. So I want to make another pot one of these days. Um, and um, yeah, trying to clean and and downsize since I have so much spring cleaning time now. So right. Yeah. And you may be moving soon, so that that's also useful. Yeah, right? it's good to have like six, I don't know, three or four months until August or something to, to get every. I can take my sweet time doing it. I don't have to feel rushed. <laughs> yeah, cool, very cool. Let me see what else. What else I had? So yeah, I actually. So I was gonna go back to those um, um, your playlists, right? So yeah, so you have some of them in your website, right? Like you, people can yeah, log in. Yeah, all of them are on my website. Is are you are they divided by like any the fundamentals? Like you, you got to do the fundamentals or like what is? Um, I well for the most part, uh, there's a section that's all um, jokingly based in uh, time. What do you call it? Uh, BPMs. Um, and then the others are either in duple or triple or triple swung or duple swung, I think. Um, okay. But you know, I just I just start playing whatever comes to mind. Like if something uh, boom chick boom chick boom chick boom chick, I might play paradiddle or just eighth notes or uh, uh, sextuplets. Yeah. Like whatever comes to mind, or I'll do mm -hmm. swung doubles or something. Yeah. Um, cool. Yeah. I just, you know I just kind of play what comes to mind. Yeah, I have an idea for you actually. What if you like recorded this Instagram lives when you go live and then you do one like at a slower tempo and then one faster and one faster, you record them and then maybe you can, I don't know, sell them as a packet with your book <laughs> <laughs> or like put them on YouTube. You know, I think that would be cool actually. Like, it's like, you know, maybe I feel like, oh, my hands are not feeling so good. So maybe I shouldn't do a full speed warm up with Josh. 
to a point where like you have one that is pretty fast so people can work up to that so that i think that would be pretty cool i don't know just just an idea crazy idea <laughs> but uh you can take it or leave it um, <laughs> All right, let me see. So I asked you about, oh yeah. So you also mentioned that audition thing you posted on your website. And I was very impressed. I was like, wow, you really went in depth on like what you, <laughs> like, the, you know, and I think that's something that everyone, you know, especially right now that people have time and if people want to take auditions and do better, just go on and check it out. Like maybe there's something, one specific thing that people need to work on more. You know what I mean? So. Uh, yeah, I encourage everyone to check that out. Anything else that we should check out done by you? Um, I guess, well, that's the most recent thing. Uh, yeah, yeah, I haven't, no, I haven't written anything in a while other than that. And I only did it because I, I wanted to, like, just kind of show, like, like you said, like, none of, none of this is a secret. Like, it's just common sense things to do that'll help you feel a lot better. Um, yeah. There's a couple of things that are unique to me, I think, um, like the, like for certain rounds, if there's like, I don't know, two pieces on xylophone that are both 120, I'll pick one to be faster than the other to mm. you know, make sure they're different yeah. or, you know, yeah, stuff like that. Um, yeah, but I mean, it just goes back to being having flexibility and you being able to play at both fast and slow and having the good time and tempo to do that and good technique yeah. to be able to live, deliver both and knowing it so well that being confident you can do it at whatever speed, you know? So that's cool. All right, let's see, let's see if we got any questions here. I know some people are, let's see, people are saying hi. Lucas Lisanti was saying hi. Uh, let's see who else we got. So if anybody has any question, right now is the time. I'm checking out here another feed. I see uh, Dave Tarantino was saying effing and Pedro, I don't know. I, oh, I, they were correcting the name of the book. Oh, yeah. Yeah, okay. Uh, yeah, so if anybody has any questions, I mean, this is just an experiment. It's a fun experiment. Oh, Leonardo Chileno, Leonardo Soto from- Oh, how do you get uh, From Dave. Uh -huh. Going going back to the beginning, uh, I learned this from Pokemon. Not not Pokemon, Digimon. Uh, go back to the very beginning. What's the simplest version of the thing you're trying to do? Uh, what so? What's the simplest version of it? What is the bad habit, and why is it bad? Um, um, if you can find why it's bad, then you can figure out based on all the simple, like what are the building blocks of it? So let's say you have an issue uh, squeezing too hard with um, rolls. Well, what's the simplest version of a roll? Just letting it do that. Okay, so how do I, what version of this can I get like, and how little can I, how little pressure do I need to get it to do that? Okay. And then as you increase either difficulty or speed, you want it to emulate whatever the simplest version is as close as possible. Um, so my, my whole thing is everything should feel like you're just doing that as, as close as possible. So obviously you can't do that at every speed. So you have to figure out, okay, how, how much do I let it go so that it still feels like a version of this. Um, if you're doing that, then that's too too much work. If you're doing this, that's too little. So you, it's finding a balance as you add difficulty and add components. Um, same thing with flams. Everybody, some people have issues with doing that. So what's the simplest version of that? Up, down, up, down. So if you could do that relaxed, Okay, then it's like, okay, what's, then the other simple version is you're just doing that. So if you can do that and then split it up, then, you know, so it's just figuring out the, the simplest version of it, um, getting that to be relaxed and efficient, and then adding difficulty and, and still having that relaxation and efficient movement between hands and all that stuff. Um, 
But yeah, what what habit is it? Maybe you could just tell me what habit is it. Yeah, that was uh, Leonardo Soto from the Houston Symphony, which I, I would say probably has a lot of really, really good habits, you know. I know. <laughs> Maybe, <laughs> it's, great. it's very nice and clean technique, so uh, that's a great question. But actually, something I noticed is that, Josh, you actually have the willingness to go, like, super slow and super basic, right? And then build them back up, right? Like, so I think I kind of got that uh, from that explanation. Good. Let's see. Do we have any more questions? Oh, I think Suleen, Suleen was asking me. Um, she was asking, "What would you, uh, what would you want to know before going into music, in a career in music? What is something um, you want to know?" I mean, on a selfish level, how to be myself. <laughs> okay. Um, that's on a selfish level. Before that, um. I wish, let's see, I wish I knew how, how, yeah, like you were saying, how basic I had to take things and how patient I had to be. Like, if I, I shouldn't move on from here until this feels comfortable. That's the only way this is going to feel comfortable. Like, I wish I... I mean, I always knew that, but I didn't realize how bare bones I had to take things. Yeah. I thought it was just, oh, I need to work on um, soft playing, so I'll play stick control soft. Well, yeah, but your your natural, this isn't right yet, which means all your taps are going to be like this or, or not organic or something. So you have to go back to just that to figure out what a tap actually is supposed to feel like where you're just letting it go like had i known that when i was in college i like i don't know where i would be cool okay let's see anybody else josh thanks for joining me is there anything else you want to say before we before we um, take off here take care of yourself and like um this is a good actually this is a good time to really get to know yourself and really like you know be kind to yourself and love yourself and if if you find something you don't like well ask yourself why don't i like this you know like i didn't like being angry why don't i like being angry my my personal relationship to anger like i don't like that well that's a part of you <laughs> like you have to accept it and figure out like how to uh deal with it in a healthy way you know um, the same thing with fear. Like, what am I afraid of? I'm afraid of snakes. Like, okay, well, I don't need to be afraid of snakes right now. Like, there are no snakes here. Why am I afraid? You know, like, so yeah, on a selfish level, that's, that's something I'm trying to do more of and, and, and trying to um, love myself more and really discover myself more. Cool. It'll make you a better human, make you a better, you know, social person, you know, yeah. be vulnerable with people and it'll make you a better musician right there's yeah. no musician without a human or else you're just a robot yeah regurgitating but <laughs> yeah lots of times just for self-reflection and also uh yeah just be uh, more human so then you'll be a better musician right cool all right well thanks for uh being um the first one on this experiment of going live it was fun I, I'm sure I'll see you going live on your stick control. Let me know when it yeah. is, when it's going to be next time. I'll be following. And uh, I'm going to try to get this. Maybe we can get this on the YouTube. So if I, if there's any yeah, way to I save it. Be able to download it on the left hand corner. I okay. Think. All right. I'll try it and we'll get it to the YouTube. So I'll let you know. So, you know, so if students, anybody interested, maybe they can access it and. Uh, yeah. yeah, thanks again, Josh. And I'm yeah, yeah. Man. take no it problem. easy. Yeah, of course. And I'll see you. I'll see you soon. All right, man. All right. Good talk to okay. you. You you too. Take care.